Hello and welcome to Living in Victory. I am Pastor Roger and today we're going to be talking about the hope of glory. That's the name of the show for today. And uh, we're going to we'll be digging into what what that really what does that really mean? Is uh, is that that verse or that actually that phrase comes from uh, Colossians 1:27, and uh, the verse is to the, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <clears throat> now, that is something that we you know we <clears throat> sometimes we get. Uh, so familiar with a with a verse or with a, a passage of scripture that you know it just kind of loses its its meaning and it becomes you know I, I talk about Mark seven thirteen where Jesus talks about uh, don't let the religious traditions make my word no effect and sometimes I'm I'm quite often I use that in the context of something that's con actually contrary to God's word well sometimes we can get so familiar with God's word that it actually becomes a religious tradition. And we really lose the significance or lose the meaning of, of what we're saying when we are actually saying God's word. Uh, one of those, you know, when we sometimes when we pray, you know, where you know, oh, you know, well, let's, let's bless the meal, let's pray over the meal, and we just pray, you know, kind of pray this prayer, and we say in the name of Jesus, Amen. And that's good that we're praying in the name of Jesus, but we, you know, when we turn it into something that's just a religious tradition, where the, the, the power kind of comes out of it, you know, there's, there, it, it, the, the, the word is becoming of no effect, and, and what we're doing is becoming of no effect. And we can, you know, we can do that with, you know, communion. We can do that with praying in the name of Jesus. We can do that with, you know, blessing, blessing our, our meals, you know, because it just becomes such a, a, a repetitive process that. And it's good that it's a repetitive process, but it, instead of uh, bringing uh, renewal and transformation, it just kind of becomes something that doesn't really have a lot of significance, but it's just what we do because we're supposed to do it. But, praise the Lord, when we, when we get that revelation, we can, again, receive the significance and receive the power of that word and receive the power of the words that we say and the words that we pray, especially when we're praying in the name of Jesus. We're, ah, I'm praying in the name, in the name of Jesus, you know. Or we're taking communion. We're, we, are, we are celebrating what the Lord has done for us. We are remembering what he has done for us. And today we're going to be talking specifically about this, this passage here. It talks about Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what does that mean? And what, 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 what is the expectation when we read this verse? What's the expectation that we can receive? What's the, what's the power of this word that can be unleashed in us and through us to receive the, the significance, the revelation, the, the, the faith attached to this verse, the, the, the transformative uh, power of God's word that's just lying right in front of us, just waiting, waiting, you know, for revelation to be ha to, to happen. You know, and sometimes we, we like, I like to use the word revelation because it's, it's a great word, it's, it's an exciting word. However, when we really think about revelation, what does revelation mean? Uh, revelation means seeing something that's already there. And if I say, wow, guys, I just saw something that was already there. Well, that kind of is not as exciting as saying, guys, I just got revelation. I was like, whoa, revelation, that's cool. Well, revelation is seeing something that's already there. And, and this verse is already here, but now we're going to get the revelation from it. So now... Let's look at what this verse means. Like Colossians 1, 27. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into it again, and, and I've got some uh, some of my own notes that I put together. Uh, they're they're gonna be in the uh, um, you know uh, set apart from the from the verse itself. And so I'm gonna talk about to uh, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of His mystery. And then here's my own note. It says them is, as you can tell this in my own note, them is the saints, because in verse 26 it actually talks about making known the mystery to his saints. Them is the saints referenced in the prior verse, verse 26. God has already chosen to reveal, and then we, the word there is riches, okay, riches. And that's talking about abundance of wealth, ab abundance of resources. So God has chosen to reveal the abundance of resources of his glory, Okay, so let's get this to them. God has God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles the riches of his glory of this mystery. So God has chosen to make known to his saints the 
abundance of riches of his glory. And the, and the words in Strong's that we're talking about, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the word glory. You know, we're looking up in Strong's, it's uh, from the Strong's Greek, and uh, it's 1391. And, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, Strong's, it, Strong's is a reference book that you can look up the words. It's online, you can get a hard copy. Strong's is a reference book where you can look up what the words that were translated, where, where the original word came from. And this particular word, glory, is, in, is a Greek word, that, and it, it's, the translation is doxa. Um, where that's, that's how that word would be in the Greek, would actually be a bunch of squiggly symbols and stuff, but doxa. And uh, it's in the Strong's reference book, it's 1391. And the usage of that word is honor, renown, glory, and especially divine quality, the unspoken manifestation of God, uh, the sp splendor to his saints. So we're gonna, so let's read this verse again. And he's, God is saying he has, God has chosen, he has decided to make known to us, you know, the Gentile is the non-Jewish believer, it's the nations that are not Jewish. He has chosen in, in and whether you're Jewish or Gentile, he's chosen to make it known to you. So he has chosen to, to make, you know, the reason why this, the, the context of the Gentiles there is because it, they already knew it was supposed to be made uh, relevant to the Hebrew believer. So now he's saying, in addition to the Hebrew believers, God has made it known to the non-Hebrew believers, the riches of the glory, the, the riches, the abundance, the, the, the wealth, the overflow of his, of his, divine qualities of his manifestation of his splendor to his saints ah oh, this is amazing this is super duper amazing now let's go on let's let's move forward in there um i'm going to go on to the next slide here um okay so which is christ in you okay so now we're continuing that verse verse 27 which is christ in you the hope of glory so what this verse is saying, the, the rest of this verse, the anointed one in you, the earnest expect, expectation of manifestation of God. So Christ in you, the anointed one in you, is the earnest expectation of that manifestation of what we just talked about, the earnest, the earnest expectation of the manifestation of God's abundance, his 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 actual presence, his resources, his, his transformative power, is, it's in you. This is the mystery. It's the anointed one in you. <laughs> the anointed one in you, praise the Lord, the anointed one in you uh, with the earnest expectation of manifestation. So Christ in you, the hope of glory, is saying the anointed one in you, the earnest expectation. That's what hope is. Hope, hope hope is an earnest expectation not well i hope someday that happens no i hope hope is an earnest expectation i have an earnest expectation of the glory of a hope the earnest expectation of the manifestation of god well, it's like, oh this is christ in me the anointed one in me the earnest expectation of the manifestation of the divine nature uh, it, you know, when we when we start to dig into this verse and say, "Ah, wow, this is this is a very powerful verse." So now, I have to have, <clears throat> according to this verse, because God has made this revealed this to me. It, I have Christ in me. You know, this is this is a the core doctrine of the Christian faith. You know, Christ is in you. We have Christ in us, and because we have Christ in us we get to have an earnest expectation of the manifestation of God's glory to show up in us and through us in this present tense, in this present world, in this present time. So I have been renewing my mind with the Word of God, because that's what this is all about. You know, you get born again, the, the incorruptible seed comes into you of God's Word, the message of the Gospel, God's Word, the incorruptible seed comes into you, and you become a born again, new creation reality in Christ Jesus. So now I've been born again, new creation reality. You're a born again, new creation reality. If you have 
uh, believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the incorruptible seed of God's word comes into your heart. You have a spiritual birth. You become born from above in your spirit, born again, we say, and you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And now you get to continue to renew your mind based on Roman, what Romans 12, 2 and many passages of, of the word, Romans 12, 2, we get, to, we get to no longer be conformed to this world. I am not conformed to this world in Jesus' name, and you don't have to be either. We get to no longer be conformed to this world, we, but we get to be transformed by the renewing of our mind to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that is the good and acceptable word of God, is the good and acceptable will of God. When we, when we have a revelation of Jesus Christ and we have a revelation that Jesus is the anointed one, Jesus is the Messiah, he is the living word of God, and he is the, the only true way to have a revelation of scriptures through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Man, I get to become transformed and renewed in my mind. And I get to see that, wow, Christ in me, the, the, the Messiah is in me. And because he is in me, I know he wants to come through me and work through me. So I have to have an earnest expectation of the glory, the manifest presence of God. And when the manifest presence of God, the anointing of God is there, there is going to be an, uh, an abundance. There's going to be an, ab an abundance of evidence that that glory is manifesting in my life. And... You know, when I say abundance, some people automatically, they think about, oh, maybe he must be talking about um, finances. I am. I'm talking about resources, I'm, but I'm not just limiting it to finances. You know, how did, how did Jesus handle things? You know, um, when Jesus walked the earth, he never had, he, he never had, a tr he never had trouble with finances. He didn't, have tr he, didn't have, he didn't have lack. He didn't have insufficiency. He had an abundance. And we see the abundance demonstrated numerous times, you know, we, the, the abundance of the harvest, when he, or the, the, the net breaking harvest of fish. What do you think the, the disciples did with all those fish? They didn't have an all you can eat fish fry and then throw the fish away. They had a, an abundance of harvest, which they sold for, and that money came in. That's what they did. They, they worked as fishermen, but they had the biggest harvest they've ever had. They had an increase in a, 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 a financial windfall and abundance. Uh, when Jesus went to the wedding, uh, and, and, he, and he turned the water into wine. It's approximately 180 gallons of wine he created. Jesus wasn't creating a bunch of uh, 180 gallons of wine for a bunch of drunk people at a wedding. He was creating 180 gallons of perfect wine, the perfect, like think about this, perfect wine created by the creator of the universe as a wedding gift for a newly married couple. I'm sure they drank some of the wine. Um, you know, the, we know that the, 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 the guy who was in charge of the wedding said, this is the best wine I have ever tasted. And, but you know they didn't drink all of it. What did they do? They probably sold some of it. I, I bet they sold most of it because the people had already had their fill. And in that creation of that wine, he, he set them up. He gave them, an, he, that's, a, that's a pretty nice wedding gift. I, I'm gonna get 180 gallons of the highest quality wine ever created by the creator, Jesus Christ, as a wedding gift. Hmm, I, you know what, you guys can take a little sip. The rest of it, we're, <laughs> we're putting it on. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got some resources now, you know, and, and when, and when, when the, when Peter was like, oh, of course we pay taxes. And he's like, Hey, Peter, you know what? We're not taking that out of the treasury. Why don't you go pull it out of that fish's mouth? Cause I got unlimited resources here. You know, you see this, but it's, but the, but the abundance, the, the, the glory is not just limited to resources. The glory is, is a, is an abundance. It's, it's the healing. It's the deliverance. It's the relationship. It's the, it, and, and okay. So it, so we put relatable terms, it's, it's walking in health. For us, when the glory manifests in our life, we, you know, when the anointing, the, uh, the anointing and the glory, I'm gonna get more into this, but I just wanna make this, I wanna make sure you understand the relevance of this for you, is that we don't have to tolerate sickness. We don't have to tolerate sin. We don't have to tolerate uh, poverty. We don't have to tolerate uh, oppression or depression or fear or anxiety. When the glory is manifesting in our life, that there is no place for that. We don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to tolerate it. We, you know, when we tolerate something, we give it place. And when it has place, it takes up residency. And when it takes up residency, it becomes. It has permanency. And and, and it, it it's 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 illegally infringing on on the 
for me, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost and none of that stuff belongs in the temple. You know, the Holy of Holies is in me. That's the, the anointed one is in me. And where he is there, I can't, it's my responsibility, uh, responsibility, uh, responsibility, because Jesus is in me. I have the ability to respond in a positive manner to whatever circumstances are contrary to the glory of the glory of God manifesting in me and through me. And I can evict these things by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of Christ in me. And so I don't have to put up with poverty. I don't have to put up with lack. I don't have to put up with insufficiency in my health, in my finances, in my thinking, in 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 my knowing my identity. I don't have to put up with, with a shortfall in my relationships, in my marriage. I, I have a supernatural marriage. We have an, a blessed marriage. If something comes into our marriage, comes into our health, comes into our, into our home that causes uh, a lack of abundance in our relationship, whether it's a you know, physical thing or emotional thing or a financial thing, man, we, as children of God, have the right to just say, uh, uh this is not for us, and and let let the glory flow. And if I just really have a desire for you, for your marriage, uh, for your children, for your children's children, for your your parents, for whoever whoever your family, your friends, whoever, and in you, I have a desire for you to have a revelation of what this hope of glory, this earnest expectation of the manifestation of God's glory in your life. So that when you, des when, you, when you know that this is for you and you know this is for now, you can have a desire for it. And when you have a desire for it, you, Jesus says, whatsoever you desire, Mark, let me say, whatsoever you desire, believe that you've received it. And when you do that, you have it because all of this has already been provided for you by God's word. This is not, we're talking about revelation. It might be new to you and it might be new to me, but it's not new to God. <laughs> you know, he, he, he's already got this set aside. That's why when we have a desire for it and we by faith receive it, it's ours because God doesn't have to go out and do it. <laughs> he's like, oh boy, Roger wants a miracle. I better figure out how to get this done. I gotta, I gotta scramble. No, he's already got it set aside. He's already got it set aside for you and me. And when we receive the revelation of what's already there, God can say, thank you. I've been waiting for you to take this. It's yours. And so I have to have an earnest expectation of the glory of God showing up in my life. And when I do, when I have that hope, then my hope, my earnest expectation can change and it, and, and it can become the substance of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I get to take hold of this with the substance of faith. By faith, I get, to, I get to grab. I get to put a demand on the glory that's there already in me. It's in me. That's what this verse says. It's in me. I get to, have an, I get to put a demand on what's already in me. And I get to see the expect, I get to see that manifestation because my earnest expectation has become substance. And because my earnest expectation has become substance, my, my faith becomes a reality. And the, the, what's already been set aside, my portion that's already been set aside, because I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. I've been blessed with every blessing in heaven. And so have you, if you're in Christ, I get to take that and I get to bring it into reality because it's already set aside for me. Now, this is exciting. We're going to get back into this. Okay, it's John 14, 12. And not that I haven't gotten out of it, but I'm just going to, I'm going to show you some scriptures here that are going to help bring about this transformation that we're talking about. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to take you through some scriptures and we're going to lay some of this out. So Jesus tells us in John 14, 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works. And these are the miracles, the signs, the the, the abundance, the things that we talked about already, you know, of the, the, the record harvest, the water into wine, the f gold coins and fishes mouths, you know, and the things that we haven't talked about in this show, the, the uh, healings, the deliverances, the raising from the dead. You're going to do the same works as me, as I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these. These, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever ever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son you may ask me anything in my name and i will do it hallelujah okay so jesus is saying 
when you ask something in my name, hey, guess what? We're going to get it done. And that's going to bring glory. Wow, that's going to bring the glory. And it's going to glorify the Father. We're talking about the earnest expectation of glory. Well, God wants that glory to be released because it glorifies Him. Okay? <laughs> when we release the glory, the Father gets glorified. Amen. So John 16, or John 15, verse 7. And this is Jesus again. He's talking. He says, if you remain in me and my words, and they're talking about the word of God, the word of the living word, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Wow. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So now here again, we're seeing the glory being released. How does the glory get released? By bearing much fruit. How does the bearing much fruit get happen? It happens by us asking <laughs> in the name of Jesus and declaring in the name of Jesus and believing in the name of Jesus and seeing the manifestation. And be like, well, we need to ask according to his will, brother. We need to ask according to his will. You're talking about, you know, this and you're talking about that. And some of that seems a little excessive. And how do I know God doesn't want me to be poor? And how do I know God doesn't want me to be sick? Well, if you're still there, I got a lot of other episodes that you can watch. We're not going to go, we're not going to regress all the way to that level. I'm, I'm talking to more of the mature. Uh, we're, we're not thumb sucking babies anymore. We're coming up. Amen. <laughs> we're, we're coming up. And, uh, you know, Jesus, I just sum it up like Jesus' perfect theology. He never made anybody sick. He, he was the exact representation of the Father. He never laid hands on anybody, made him sick. He never laid hands on anybody, he made him poor. He didn't say, cast your fish into the sea. He said, throw in the net and you're going to get a net breaking harvest. You better get a bigger net. You better get friends to help you. This is the same God that, that the prophet in the Old Testament said, get some vessels because the, the overflow is happening. Okay, you want to know what God's will is? Uh, Jesus tells us in John 10, 10, uh, life and life abundance, the overflow. Jesus says those who believe in me are going to have rivers of living water flowing out of them. That's God's will. If it's abundance, if it's overflow, if it's blessing, guess what? You're in the will of God. Now, there are some more, there are spe there's a specific will of God for your individual life. And th those are the things that we really uh, seek it out and, and discern and pray and, and, and believe we're being led by the Spirit. But God's will is not for you to, I can, I can just say this out, God's will does not include poverty for your life. God's, whatever it is, it does not include sickness. Whatever it is, it doesn't, it doesn't include um, despair. It doesn't include a broken, brokenness in your relationships. It, you know, it doesn't include a bad marriage. That, no, that stuff is not from God, okay? We're talking, about, we're talking about healthy relationships. We're talking about healthy finances. We're talking about a healthy body. Yeah, and not just like normal range healthy. I'm talking about optimal range healthy. Okay, there's a difference. We're not, we're not conformed to the world. We're not going to be conformed. We're going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we're going to live in a, a life that glorifies God in our finances, in our health, in our thinking, in our, in our doing, in our relationships, our marriage, our families. This is what we're talking about. So, Wherever something is out of line with that in your life, you get to see the glory manifest, but you have to know it's already there. Now, John 17, Jesus is talking, and, and I'm just going to read this. He says, uh, verse 20, my prayer is not, is not for them alone. And he's talking about the people that were with him at that very moment. But it's not for them alone, but it's for all those who believe in me through their message. So that would be all of us. That, uh, that all of them may be one. And this is not talking about me and you being one. This is talking about me and you being one with the Father, just as Jesus says, just as you are in me. He's talking about the Father. It just be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory. So listen, I know in some of your Bibles, the, the, the little title or whatever that they added in there may say future glory. This is, he's talking about the future glory. Okay, I have given them the glory. There is nothing future about that. <laughs> I'm just going to say, that is past tense. I, he's talking, Jesus, how can Jesus be talking past tense about me when this was 2,000 years ago? Because he's the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Just remember that. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Again, yes, we have unity in the church, but he's talking about having unity with them, that they may be one with us as we are one. 
I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought into complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And remember what he just said is right before this. He said, he said, just as you are in me and I am in you, that them be one with us. Okay, so Jesus wants to know that he's in us, the Father is in us, and the Holy Spirit's in us, and we're brought into that unity. For I want those who have given me, for I want those you have given me to be with me where I am to see my glory. Jesus wants us to see his glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Wow. All right. This is the restoration of glory. That first Adam lost the glory. We can read that in Psalms chapter 8, and we see that what happened in the garden. When he fell, the glory departed. When Jesus came, the glory came back. And Jesus wants us to see his glory and to share in his glory. Now, Colossians 3 says, I know, well, God is not going to share his glory with another. Remember, yes, he won't. He, but read that Jesus just... <laughs> that, but, you take your argument up with Jesus then. But you think, you just read what Jesus told us. But here's the deal. We are brought in to God right now. We are in him. We are, and he is in us. And we, that's what Jesus is saying. We're brought in. That's why we can share in the glory. Colossians 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Okay, so that's where we are. We're brought in. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And I know, you know, one of the traditions we got is like, oh, well, that happens after we die. Yeah, or, or, okay. <laughs> Dude, can we just read that? Okay. You have died. This is, you have already died, okay? You've died with Christ. You were crucified with him. So if you want to blame, well, that doesn't happen until I die. Well, praise the Lord. According to this verse, you have already died with Christ and your life is now hidden with him. So that's not going to happen after you physically die. This is talking about right now. So right now, you have already died at the, on the cross with Christ and you have been born again to new life with him. You were resurrected with him to new life. And now when, his, when Christ appears in you, when that hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope, the earnest expectation of glory, when that earnest expectation becomes a reality, the manifestation of the glory appears. Guess what? Christ is, you are there, he is there, and you are appearing with him in that glory. Isn't that amazing? Man. Uh, well, I, I don't know if that's for today. Proverbs thirteen twelve says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I, I am 100% certain that God knew that verse was in the Bible. I'm just 100% I'm certain of that. And so when he said, when the, word, when the inspired word said, um, Christ in you, the hope of glory, he wasn't talking about something that wasn't accessible. He wasn't talking about, he wasn't saying, I'm going to give them hope deferred because I want their hearts to be made sick. No. He said, I'm giving them hope for an earnest expectation because I want them to desire the things that I have put into them. I want them to desire the things that the works that are going to bring me glory. I want them to desire the manifestation of the fruit that's going to bring me glory. I want them to desire the things that I have in store for them, the good works I have prepared for them in advance to walk in because I need them to be aware. I need them to have an earnest expectation of my glory to manifest in their life through Christ the anointed, my son Jesus in them, through the anointed Messiah in them, because Christ is trying, he's, he's came in you so he can live through you, amen, so you can share in that life with him. Hey, we are almost out of time. I think we have just a few seconds left. So I just want to encourage you, have an earnest expectation for the glory of God to manifest in your life today. In Jesus' name, be blessed.